Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In this video lecture, I am going to explain one other way of performing object recognition. In the domain of machine learning, there are several ways to perform classification of data using supervised learning. One popular and powerful way is the use of neural networks, which is quite well established technique. Several variants of neural networks are being worked on and are being used for a variety of tasks as per the demand of the application. In this lecture, I am going to focus on a special type of neural networks called convolutional neural networks, commonly abbreviated as CNN or ConvNet. It is used specifically for automating the process of feature extraction directly from the image data. Before jumping on to the details of CNN, here is a list of some famous classifiers used in the field of machine vision for classification of segmented data. You may refer to these videos for nearest neighbor classifier and maximum likelihood classifier. Other commonly used classifiers are naive Bayes classifier, the CN tree, sport vector machines, linear regression, logistic re regression, etc. Majority of the classifiers work in the feature space and try to generate boundaries between clusters of features placed in feature space as we saw in nearest neighbor and maximum likelihood classifier. But what if we cannot generate boundaries in feature space? Are there any techniques that work around the methodology of generating boundaries? The answers to these questions are not far away than our own selves. We can look for such techniques by learning how our brain classify all sorts of data, whether it is audio, visual, or any other sensory data. The biological neural network may be approximated by an artificial neural network, but exactly what model of ANN can best estimate the working of a biological neural network is still unknown. However, a variety of ANNs have been proposed and established, but a single ANN capable of performing above par in all kinds of application domains is still missing. A class of ANNs established to perform quite well for image classification is known as convolutional neural networks. And we are going to study these things in this lecture. In image analysis and recognition, the most difficult task is not the classification, but extraction of features that may ease the process of classification X as the bottleneck. CNNs are specialized in extracting features directly from 2D images, videos, text, or sound signal. This allows us to directly feed the input image to the CNN, which will extract features from the image automatically, hence removing the need for manual defining and extracting features. Some real-life examples include face recognition and self-driving cars, which rely heavily on image recognition. Another important point related to CNNs is that training of a network is quite a cumbersome process through which all kinds of ANNs must pass. But as the field of deep learning is blooming, networks trained on various kinds of data are readily available and one can easily use a pre-trained network to avoid huge computational investment in the training process. To understand the working of CNN, we should first explore our understanding of how human visual cortex is believed to work. In visual cortex, before recognition can be performed, features are extracted. These features are, but not limited to, various edges, limb lines, shapes, colors, etc. The initial layers extract these features and pass the results on to the next layers. These next layers will take these features as input and extract higher level features such as shapes made by combining edges, lines, etc. Layer by layer, this information progresses and then recognition is done on the base of extracted features and memorized knowledge. Concurrently, similar features are extracted in the initial layers of the CNN, which are combined in subsequent layers to form higher level features. Once higher level features have been established, the task of recognition may be either performed using a neural network 
or through any other machine learning classifier. Commonly, features are extracted using CNNs, while classification is performed using sport vector machines, abbreviated as SVM. If we can list down major advantages of using CNN, then we will arrive at following three advantages. Firstly, manual extraction of features is avoided completely. Secondly, CNNs produce state-of-the-art results, especially for recognition of objects and scenes in images as compared to other types of ANNs and techniques. And thirdly, the provision of using already trained networks makes CNN favorite for real-time image recognition tasks. The overall summary of the working of CNN is well presented through this flow diagram. The initial layers extract features from the input images directly and these features are fed to the classifier that will generate recognition vector as per the trained system. For example, in the shown flow graph, the image of car is provided to the CNN, which extract low level and then high level features from the image. The classifier then generates probabilities of matching of the input image to the trained classes. And as shown here, the input image matches 95% with the class of car, while 3% with trucks and 2% with the bicycle and so on. Therefore, it will be easily established that the input image is of a car. Now, before explaining the working of the CNN in detail, the disadvantage of using CNN should also be pointed out. The only major disadvantage of CNN is that they require high computational power. As we will see that CNNs rely on a large number of convolutional operations. These operations are quite resource hungry. But with the advances in GPU and parallel computing technology, this advantage has been curbed to a reasonable level. And nowadays CNNs are being used quite extensively in several real life applications. A CNN, like any other neural network, has several layers. But unlike other neural networks, each layer of a CNN further comprises of three separate operations. Hence, a single layer is in fact a combination of three operations. These three operations are of convolution, activation achieved by a rectified linear unit, and pooling. Each layer of CNN will implement these three operations and as input image passes through subsequent CNN layers, it will keep on getting downsampled, that is smaller, and will be converted into complex feature image. Once a final set of feature image has been formed, classification can be performed using any suitable classifier. I am going to focus on feature learning phase only as this is the phase where a CNN has the most utility. As I have stated that each layer of CNN comprises of three separate operations, let's investigate the details of these three operations. The first one is of convolution. This operation passes the input image through several convolutional filters or masks or kernels. Each mask activates certain feature. For example, one mask might be for edge detection in horizontal direction, other for edge detection in vertical direction, another for diagonal edge detection, yet another for smoothing the image, one for sharpening, and one for implementing the max filter, and so on. After convolution, we will have a set of images which are the result of application of each convolution filter. For example, if we have used 10 convolution masks, then we are going to have a set of 10 feature maps. Additionally, the size of these feature maps will be reduced depending on the size of the mask used. No image padding is used over here, which results in reduction of size of the output when an image is convoluted with a filter. Each feature map is passed through rectified linear unit, abbreviated as ReLU. The function of this unit is quite simple. That is, it only allows activated features to pass through. This is achieved by mapping all negative values in the feature map to zero while maintaining the positive values. 
Let me explain these operation concretely through an example. Suppose we have this 5 by 5 image. The first thing this image will meet is the set of convolution filters. For example, this one. Image will be convoluted with this filter. For convolution, we will place the filter on the image over here and sum up the products of multiplications of the overlapping element. So the output at the first location would be minus 1 multiplied with 1 plus minus 1 multiplied with 2 plus 1 multiplied with 5 plus 1 multiplied with 5. It will come out to be 7. The output at the second location if we place the filter at the second location over here would be minus 1 into 2 plus minus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 5 plus 1 into 4. It would come out to be 6. Similarly, the filter will be placed onto the third location which is over here and output would be calculated. Then on the fourth location and once again the output would be calculated. Then the fifth location would be over here and so on until we reach the last location which will be over here. Once we have calculated all the outputs, we will end up with this feature map. There are two important things to note. Firstly, the size has reduced by 1, that is filter size minus 1. And secondly, you can see this filter is for detecting horizontal edges and how this filter has produced large output at areas where there is a horizontal edge in the input image. Similarly, the same input image would be passed through another filter of the same size but different coefficient so that it may extract a different feature. For example, this one. Following the same procedure, we will get this output. Over here, we can see that this filter has produced larger output at locations of vertical edges. Therefore, this filter extracts a different feature than the first one, that is vertical edges. The output of each individual mask would be then passed through a ReLU, which will chop all the negative values. Hence, we would be left with these things. What ReLU has done over here is that it has chopped all the negative values and has only allowed positive values to pass through, that is the activated features only. In the same fashion, the input image would be passed through multiple filters and output from all filters through the ReLU. As the last step of the first convolution layer, the output of the ReLU would be passed through a non-linear operation called pooling. Pooling can be of various types, but commonly used are max pooling and min pooling. Max pooling is just like the maximum convolutional filter that gives the maximum pixel as output when applied to some location. But in case of pooling, the application of filter is always at completely unique location. That is, the first application would be over here and the output would be 50 in this case, as it is the largest pixel under the filter. The second application would be two units ahead that is equal to the filter size, hence it would be over here and the output here would be 16. The third application would be at this location with output of 7 and the last would be over here with an output of 2. So this will be a non-linear maximization operation that achieves downsampling as well. Therefore, this is the output of one convolutional layer. This output would be fed to the next convolutional layer where similar operation would be performed again that will further downsample the image and strengthen the features. Let me try to explain this whole process once again through this flow graph. Let's suppose that this is the input image which has been passed to this first layer over here. These four are the convolutional filters present at the start of the first convolutional layer. The input image would be applied to all these four convolutional filters and the output of these four convolutional filters would pass through 
the rectified linear units and then through the process of pooling. And let's suppose that this is the output of the first layer. The output of the first layer will then be applied to the input of the second layer. Hence, each output would go through one more convolutional filter over here, over here, and over here like this. The output of these convolutional filters will once again go through redo units over here and pooling units over here. At the end of the second layer, we would be left with this thing. Now let's suppose that these images which we have achieved over here are these ones. Let's suppose that they are only two by two images. The next step would be to flatten out these feature maps and how to do flattening? This is how flattening is done. These four pixels, namely one, two, three, and four, they would be placed over here like this. Then comes the next four pixels. They would be placed over here. Then comes the next four pixels. And then at the end, the last four pixels. This is flattening. This flattened array would be passed through any suitable classifier that has been trained and this classifier will try to classify based on these features this input image into one of the classes either class 1, class 2 or class 3. So coming back to this flow graph this portion is of feature learning that is feature learning phase and this last portion is of classification where the flattened output of the feature learning phase has been used. Just for an example, can you figure out how size reduction will happen if the input image is of 500 by 500 and 20 convolutional filters of size 3 by 3 are used? The convolution operation will generate an output of 498 by 498 by 20 and the pooling will downsample it to 166 into 166 into 20. The second layer will further reduce the size to 164 into 164 into 20 and pooling will make it 54 into 54 into 20. A third layer will reduce this size further into 17 into 17 into 20. Now if we flatten this thing, we would be left with 5780 into one array. So what we have done over here, we have converted an image having 250,000 pixels into a feature map having only 5780 pixels. The flattened output will be fed to any suitable classifier but in practice SVM and simple fully connected MLP neural networks are quite commonly used. Viewers are encouraged to try implementation of CNN on any suitable programming language by following tutorials present at the referenced locations. I hope this video will serve as a tool for developing basic knowledge of CNN and allow the audience to implement simple CNNs for classification of image data freely available on the internet.